you'll probably remember me making a dovetail alignment board some time ago to solve all these issues, like the board's racking. I should say before I go any further, I wasn't going to upload this as I screwed up and it, it isn't very cool, but you'll um, see that in a bit. There's lots out there that people say you should do, like cutting a ridge out of the inside of the tail and using the chisel to straighten them up. But that's a crap shoot. It's a crap idea. It's a gamble and it doesn't work. But as the seasons did their thing to my um, wooden dovetail alignment board, it transpired that making one out of course on wood was a mistake and rendered my beautiful alignment board as useless as tits on a ball. I had this scrap bit of birch ply, which you can also see is already cut. Nothing stable, pl bar plastic, even metal expands and contracts with, with the seasons. And I've had trouble with, with plastic too, actually, to be honest with you. One thing I, I made sure of was the ply was near parallel as possible. A little tip, cutting mitres on a chop saw. Cut the bulk of waste away first and then nibble up to your line. Never chop and hope, as I call it probably burn your mitre and um, it can push the sauce slightly out. I mean, just the hair out and your mitre's not going to match up anyway. And that's why I prefer the handle on this mitre saw because how the handle's positioned, it's just like you're holding a hand saw, not like other saws. So it puts your arm into that position of hand sawing. Now I'm going to use the domino because I have it, albeit I use the um, prop and child 500 and that lets me redoing it with the 700 and you'll see the remnants of that later but you could make a spline use biscuits dowels or, or nothing for the mitres mitres aren't as weak as people make them out to be either i've got to remember that and this is, doesn't really need it's not going to take a beating is it so it's not the end of the world without it being reinforced i mean i'm using p glue pu glue polyurethane for one reason this particular pu glue cures in five minutes otherwise I, I use it when it's too cold to use pva which is, needs something like 10 degrees warmth in the shop pu is much lower like five or seven degrees i think i spray water on i get asked this a lot i spray water on the pieces because that's what it says to do on the label i guess that helps the glue penetrate and make for a stronger bond You're probably wondering why I didn't fit the dado blade because by the time I've done all of that, I've already done what I wanted to do with the 3.2 millimeter curved blade. I'm not being lazy. Here's one for the HS guys. I know my saw, it's rigid, no vibrations. I know what I can do and what I can't do with it. By me flinching, nothing would have gone wrong here. When you see someone whip out a domino machine and you don't have one, don't get irate about it. And worst of all, don't bother me with your boring shit. Figure out another way of achieving the same deal. After all, that's what woodworking is about. You know, so there's some tools to just make life a lot easier and faster. A mortise machine would do it. But do you have one? Well, what's a domino? It's a mortising machine. Same deal, just better. It might be about now you're going, I'm sure I've seen this jig somewhere before. Didn't Jonathan Capps Moses do this? Yeah, he did. I didn't know that. I saw this jig on a friend's um, worktop and I thought, that's a damn sweet idea. I've got to make one. And I just shot off to the workshop and made one and videoed it and made this video only to find out later on my friend said to me, Jonathan Katz Moses is where I got this from. I was like, oh, fuck. Anyway, the cool thing to do is to leave a link down the script, down below in the description of Jonathan Katz Moses' site where you can buy his CNC version of these for, I think, $20 or something really cheap. I'm just going to add a little dab of glue in here just to make the dominoes permanent. I don't want them pulling out later on. I don't want any squeeze out. Those fences I cut on the table saw earlier, I'm screwing them in. So if there's any discrepancies further down the line, or ne there is now, which there isn't, like my original alignment board, I can shim them and sort it out, unlike if I use glue. Height-wise of the side fences, I kept them until uh, about 6 mil, I think it was. I can't see me, me ever cutting dovetails in stock any thinner than 9 mil, so um, that was why I decided on the 9 mil. And here's my issue with the itsy-bitsy version. 
that's why I made the wings to support the board along the width. I mean, drawers are seldom that shallow, so it needed to be able to support them. Which I thought was an, a nice add on that. And I think I need another one for the top to stop the board from tipping. And the nice thing is it all comes apart and go into, into your drawer and take up very little amount of space. I, when I marked out the uh, mortises for these tenors, I didn't really pay much attention to it. I just drew lines and then shot the dominoes. So that hence why I've labelled them, because each piece isn't going to go into dip, you know, either top or bottom. To all my super fans, I hope you're kicking ass and taking names. I'd just like to say a thank you to Joe, Justin Walsh, Mark Dana, Kevin O'Connor, Derek Hansen, Jimmy Frick, Jovic Workshop, Peter Davidoff, Scott Broomfield, and Paul Hodgson. Thank you. So if you like the cut of my jib, please like and subscribe. Share if you're really feeling kinky. And uh, we'll see each other again. Be lucky.